Animating the characters in your game can be a real pain, especially if you're not an artist, but there are certain techniques you can use, like setting up a 2D rig on your character that makes animations really easy to do. In this video, we'll quickly go through creating a character, setting up a rig, and then animating with that rig, all in just a few minutes. But first, I'd like to tell you about how this video is sponsored by Core. If you haven't heard yet, Core is the new free game creation platform that lets you build, publish, and play games. On my videos, one of the most common questions I get is, can you just send me the code? And as I've told you in the past, the answer to this is always going to be no. With a platform like Core, they've made it really easy to build a game with no coding required. You can get started making games right away using thousands of free high quality assets that encompasses music, sound, and art. But if you want to code your own game logic, well then you definitely can, because Core fully supports scripting with Lua. Once you build your game out and you get to a point you're happy with, you can simply click a single button and your game will be published to the Core platform where others can now play your game. A tool like this that gives you high quality assets out of the box is a good way to test ideas and quickly bring your project to life. Which is convenient because right now, Core is hosting the Traffic Jam competition between July 29th and August 16th. There's a $25,000 prize pool, and the participants that build the best vehicle-based games using Core will split the prizes. Core is just another tool that can be used during your game development journey, and right now is a great time to download Core, give it a shot, and who knows, if you submit something to the Traffic Jam, you might just win some money. And remember, this is all completely free. For more information on Core and the Traffic Jam, use the link at the top of the description. And a big thank you to Manicore Games for supporting the channel. Well, to actually rig up a 2D character, we need to make a character in the first place. So I'm gonna show you my favorite way to do that. I prefer to use Photoshop. You don't have to use Photoshop, it is expensive. The main goal is to have every body part on its own separate layer, or at least separated so you can make them their own sprites. And with Photoshop layers, it's easy to do that, but I'll talk about that more later as we go. And when we first open a brand new Unity project, we actually want to start with importing a package that'll make it really easy to bring Photoshop files into Unity. So if we go up to the Window tab and go to Package Manager, you can actually look for this 2D PSD importer, and I already have it installed, so it says update here, but you simply just wanna hit install or update, whatever option shows for you. And now you can actually bring PSD, which are Photoshop files, into your Unity project, and we'll know how to deal with them, basically. So in Photoshop, it's pretty simple. So if I create this circle here, then I should make sure I call this layer the head, and I can add another one. And this one could be called the torso and so on and so forth until you have every body part you want, including eyes on their own layer as well. So here's a character I created. I tried to like color code the different body parts just so it's a little obvious. It doesn't look <laughs> the best, but you can kind of see what's going on here, right? Every body part has their own distinct layer down at the bottom right. I can remove the head, the eyes are separate, the neck separate, etc., etc. And so we can save this off and bring it into our Unity project. I just saved it in our assets folder. And you'll see in our assets folder, we have this player PSD file and it looks a little different by the icon. It's a prefab. And if we expand it, it basically makes prefabs out of each body part and brings in the sprites and separates them based on the layer. So it does a lot of that heavy lifting for us by just bringing in all the different layers, which is why this is a really handy way of going about it. If you weren't to use Photoshop, you could do something similar, but you'd have to use the sprite editor and slice up each one of these body parts by yourself, which isn't a big deal. We've done something similar with my ragdoll tutorial. One thing we do want to change is on the mesh type, it should default to tight. We want to change this to full rect and to hit apply. So how do we actually go about rigging up this character? If we drag our player into the scene, you'll notice that he's already put together. So now we need to actually create a bone structure that we can animate from. And this is where the actual rigging comes into place. So to do this, it's actually pretty simple. What we want to do is open up the sprite editor. And in the top left, we can open up this menu and instead go to skinning editor, which is eerily named. And so we have our guy posing here, which is great. And we have all these options on the left of what we want to do. And the first thing we want to look at is this bones category. We want to start with creating a new bone. And generally where you want to do is start this from the pelvis. So at the bottom of our torso, we could come here and draw in a bone. So I'm just going to click and drag up to about the middle of the torso. And you'll notice once you finish, it has you creating a new bone. You can right click to stop doing that. And if you didn't mean to right click, you could go back to the top of the previous bone or any other bone you've placed and click and drag from there. And you'll see it's kind of like pinned to it. And that's how you know that they're extending from one bone to the next. And so generally what you want is to have at least two torso sprites, depending on how your sprites are set up. But in this case, I want to be able to bend on the top and the bottom. So I'll just click there. If you want to have a bone associated with another, but not directly attached, what you can do is click on a bone first and you'll see it's highlighted now. And if I drag over there, you'll see that green line is kind of coming out of it. And so I could start from the shoulder and do the bicep, then do the arm, then the hand. I could click on this bone again and then do the other side. I could click on the red bone and do the legs. 
Again, making sure the, the pelvis is highlighted to the other leg. For the head, we could just do one big one. And then now with the head selected, and now this might not make sense at first, but it makes it easier to animate later on. What you can actually do is click on the head bone and then for the eyes, put two individual bones. So just put one there, select the head bone again and do one there. So I'm going to hit apply now. And as you'll see, we basically have our guy looking like he's rigged up with all the bones in place. But in the top left menu, if you go back to preview pose, if you start moving any of these bones around, you'll notice they're not actually moving the body part and we want it to because they're not actually attached yet to the sprite. And so what we wanna do is actually map these bones to an individual sprite. And Unity provides us a tool that makes this pretty easy to do, though you could do it manually. Under the geometry tab, you'll notice we have auto geometry. And that's what we want to use but we also have these other options as well but for now we'll just click auto geometry and so there's a few options down here i'll show you what weights are in a second but we want to make sure it's enabled for now and so the main option of note here is subdivide it basically will break down each one of these sprites and the higher the number the more detailed it is and the more flexibility you can get over each bone to each sprite which might sound complicated but it will make sense when you actually do it for now i'll just leave my settings as default and hit generate for all visible and so when that finishes you'll notice our guy now is shaded all different colors and these correspond to the individual bone colors and so in some places it makes sense like this forearm seems to be mostly light blue this biceps green red and yellow are respective to the sides of the torso and if you were to click on preview pose now and try moving around the bones, you'll notice that it's actually moving our sprite with it, which means that it's successfully rigged, but it might be a little sloppy at this point. For example, if I try lifting up this bicep, you'll notice the torso kind of gets like deformed and same with like the head, like this is weird, right? And so this is where weights come into play. We have this last tab down here called weights. And basically what's happening here is this bicep bone actually has too much influence in how it's manipulating the top of the torso. And so what we wanna say is have this yellow bone here that's highlighted now have full control of basically the upper torso. And that's where weights come into play. It dictates how much each bone has influence on each of the individual sprites. And it's actually really easy to fix this. We can double click on our mesh and you'll see that it highlights the sprite. And then we can select our bone. So our upper torso is now selected. And with the weight brush selected, we can start painting these different vertices. And you'll see it kind of fix itself as we go along the sides of the torso. And what we're basically saying is that we want this upper yellow bone to be in full control. And it kind of just springs back to life. And you can do this with every single sprite. So for the head, we really want this blue bone to be in full control of it not the eyes. We just want to cover every single vertice. You'll notice as you play around with things, you'll see where they're attached. So if I start moving this eye around, for example, you'll see that it's like attached to the hair, which is obviously not right. So we can go back to the head and select the bone and then kind of clean these up as we play around. And you just want to go through and make sure each one of these is cleaned up to your preference. Start bending some things, see how it looks. I think this looks fine for now. I'm happy with this. And you can always come in and clean it up after, but make sure you hit apply when you're done. And so now back in the Unity editor, if you actually expand your player prefab, you'll notice that there's this new bone object that's been created. And if we expand this, you'll notice each one of these bones has been created, which matches the rig we just set up. In the sprite editor, you could actually individually name each one of these. So you could set this from bone one to something like pelvis and hit apply. And now you'll see the name change take place. So in general, it's a good idea to go through each one of these bones and name them the appropriate thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do this really quick. With everything named properly, it's much easier to go through and kind of see what's going on. So now is the fun part. We actually rigged up a character finally, and it's all ready to go. So what do we do now? Well, the whole point of rigging up a character is to easily make animations. And so let's go ahead and do that. On our player object, let's go ahead and add an animator. In our assets folder, we can create a new animator controller, and I'll call this player controller. We'll attach the player controller to it. With our player selected, we can open up our animation tab and hit create. I'm going to call this idle anim. And so this is where it's kind of cool. What we can do is turn on gizmos and you'll actually see each of the individual bone pieces. And right now we're just T-posing, but we can change that really easily. So we can select this recording mode and have it enabled. We can start at the beginning of our animation and we basically want to get our guy into what would be an idle pose. So for that, I'll have the arms brought down lower 
I'll have the head kind of neutral. A neat trick to do for animations with these bones is to actually use scaling to our advantage. So I'll skip like halfway through our animation, we'll say half a second in, and I'll click on our torso and I'll change the scale to like 0.98 in the X, 0.98 in the Y. And then I'll click back to one second, which I'll have as like the end of the animation. And I'll set this back to one. And so as we play, you'll see that now it's kind of like he's breathing in and out. There's a little bit of motion going on. Just like it's a little more obvious that there's something happening here. We could tilt the head forward a little bit. And then at the end of it, tilt it back. With these bones in place, it doesn't even matter what sprites there are. You're not animating on the sprites. You're animating on the bones and the rig itself. I mean, I think you guys kind of get the point. There's a lot more you could do to make this actually interesting. You could have like the arms move out, whatever. But it's really easy to scale, move, and rotate each one of these bones to get it in a position of where you want. And it's a lot easier than handcrafting every single position and then bringing it into Unity. And I mean, that's basically all it takes to rig up a character. Making animations is something you're going to have to do on your own, but I think I'm going to stop there. If you have any trouble with this, definitely leave a comment or join our Discord. I'm more than happy to answer any questions or help out or someone in the community will. People have been really good about doing that. Like the video if it helped. For more information on Core and the Traffic Jam, use the link at the top of the description. And don't forget to subscribe.